Check out this guy right behind me here. That's a goat. It's the kind of goat you see at a petting zoo. Now that I'm doing Keith's country uh, farm animal zoo um, art, this is my new stuff right here. But before we get to me drawing this or inking it in, you guys stay around for that. We got a special surprise for you today. We're doing a special country chili cheese dog recipe, and we're going to show you how to make country chili cheese dogs step by step. You're going to want to stick around for that. And then after, well, we'll do the chili, chili dogs first, and then we'll do this. Okay? So stay tuned. Ready? So what makes a chili cheese dog a country chili cheese dog? It's the fact I was wearing a cowboy hat when I recorded this. Um, first off, we start off with some two hot dog buns, uh, fresh out of the package here. And uh, helping me out here is my wife. Uh, she watches that chop show all the time. So this is her version of being on chopped. Only you can't see your head. So she uh, opens up the uh, hot dog bun with, a, with much skill. And then she uh, opens a package of hot dogs. I don't know what brand. I don't know if they're bun length. I don't know anything about that. Uh, I, I didn't ask ahead of time. Uh, she lines them up, makes them look really nice and neat. And with her thumb, pops open that can. Look at that. That muscle. Just pulls that muscle out. And then I was kind of surprised here. I was a little shocked. She put the entire can of chili on my cheese dogs. I thought she maybe she put a half a can. But she told me that uh, if she didn't use the whole can, she'd end up wasting it. So I got a whole can of chili plus two uh, hot dogs on a bun. So here we go. She uh, now grabs the, does that, does that say cheddar cheese on there? I don't even know what she used. She grabs a handful of it here and loads it up for me. Loads up my country chili cheese dog. It's country. I'm wearing a cowboy hat. So it's country. Uh, pops it in the microwave. I do believe she put it in there for two minutes, but I edited this, so now, bam, it's done. We pop this baby open and uh, put it on the table, and we, we uh, grab my little wine glass full of Kool-Aid to garnish it off. Excellent job. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you very much. Now, we have my petting zoo goat. Uh, if you follow my page, and I know you don't because I don't get any followers because nobody subscribes to me, and I don't know why they don't, because this stuff is pretty flippin' awesome. You should probably subscribe to me right now. And ring the bell, because if you want to see me do more goats and chickens and horses and stuff, I have a horse planned. Uh, the only way you're going to know about it is if you ring the bell. And I hate to whine about that, but uh, you really you really need to. So, first thing I'm doing is I'm taking my 8B as in boy pencil. B as in boy, which means it's a thick, fat, dark pencil. And I'm doing my outlines. Then I dip into some India ink with a brush and I really thicken up the outlines and I darken them down. Um, I have a cartoony background. I do a lot of cartoons, a lot of Marvels and DCs and this is the way they do it in the comic books with the big thick black lines. I go in with my ink wash. This is about 90%. It's not completely black but it's dang dark. A little darker than I'm used to but you know I had a reference with me and I, I was kind of trying to follow that uh, petting zoo goat the best I could. And I think I nailed it pretty good. I actually had no idea if this was going to work out. I had no clue. I haven't never done a goat before. And um, I was really kind of shocked that the way this turned out. But look at that. He had a nice smile on his face. That goat is happy to be there because he's in a petting zoo. If you've ever taken your kids to a petting zoo before, you know you buy that food and you feed the little goats. And it's really cute. Yeah, that's what this is. I think, this, I think I found this on, um, on Google Pictures under petting zoo goat. So now I'm putting a little bit of uh, a little bit of background, about 40% gray. I do that because it makes the highlights pop. Pop, pop, pop. Then I put some highlights in the eyes. And you know that goats have square eye uh, pupils? It's the weirdest looking thing you've ever seen. They sure do. So I'm adding a little more darks because I wanted some contrast. I want more values in my picture because I value my picture. That was kind of like a pun or something. Darken the pupils a little bit. Then I come in and I, I get really brave here. I'm thinking, oh, this thing's pretty much done. I'm, I'm done with it. So what do I decide to do? Just watch this. It's coming up. Uh, not quite yet. I'm, I'm darkening up the face a little bit more. And I, a little more darkening. Uh, I'm getting brave. I am brave. Uh, you know, 10 years ago. Oh, here we go. I'm putting in these hatch marks because I'm kind of emulating the hair, you know, cross hatching. And I didn't know if this was going to work. I'm using like 60% uh, gray, and it did work. I just went for it. Boom, 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 boom. I'm just going for it. And I think it really made the picture pop, pop, pop. 
That's my that's my new thing to say. Pop, pop, pop. But uh, the, the hair looks good. The goat looks good. It makes me want to go to take my kids to a petting zoo, even though they're both 20 years old.